Hello and welcome to Nigeria, The Road to 2019, a series of programmes where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I'm Charles Anyagolo. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, all the news, comment and analysis that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including as direct attacks by Boko Haram on Nigerian troops increase, President Buhari visits the epicenter of the insurgency and calls an emergency summit with Nigeria's neighbors. But is there a military solution to what in many ways is an ideological war? And with the huge amount of criticism leveled against the government since the attacks, how much of a political setback will this be for Mr. Buhari as the 2019 ballot approaches? We'll hear from Mr. Buhari's spokesman, as well as assessments from security analysts. So, Boko Haram are back with a vengeance. By one account, their escalating attacks include at least 17 attempts to overrun army bases since July, most of them in Bornu State. And that's why President Buhari traveled to Bornu State, visiting the capital, Maiduguri, yesterday, where he's been meeting troops and senior army officers following deadly attacks in the last few weeks that's killed some 100 Nigerian soldiers near the border with Niger. But while he was there, reports emerged of another attack by Boko Haram militants in the northeast last night, an assault on a military base in which three soldiers were killed. The situation has become serious enough for the leaders in the region to gather for what's been called an emergency summit today. That's the presidents of Chad, Niger, Cameroon and Nigeria. It was President Buhari who three years ago declared that the war against Boko Haram had been technically won. That's after more than 25,000 deaths in nine years of fighting. So what's going on in the Northeast? How much is security now a central issue as the 2019 elections approach? And are we looking at a repeat of the Boko Haram crisis that helped Mr. Buhari to electoral victory in 2015? Well, joining me in the studio is President Buhari's spokesman, Garba Shehu. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for this opportunity. Because, of course, you've just come back from Borno State, haven't you? That is absolutely correct. What was the purpose of President Buhari's visit to Borno State, and how urgent was that visit? Well, of course, the army, the chief of army staff's conference had to be, had to be moved from Benin, Edo State, to Borno, Meduguri, in view of uh, the recent developments. Mr. President was there in order to see and hear for himself from the army commanders on the front lines and to commiserate with the, the military over the losses uh, that we had suffered of, uh, of late and to also visit in hospital you know, those uh, soldiers who had been injured, which he did yesterday. So it was basically an urgent visit to see how he can tackle the Boko Haram crisis in the Northeast. I understand he's also convening a meeting of the leaders of the Chad Basin to pool their resources to tackle the crisis. Is that right? Yes, that is absolutely correct because we cannot deny it. There is a spiral of sorts. Uh, on a very thin line, on a very thin borderline dividing Nigeria and particularly Chad. If it makes sense to use the word or to phrase, to use the phrase, you know, soft border and hard border as they do with the Brexit, I, I think that uh, the terrorists are looking for opportunities where defense is weakest and then they make their entry into our own territory uh, wreak havoc and jump back to where they came from and um, this security issue in general and the Boko Haram insurgency in particular was something President Buhari made a key plank of his first term in office he's had four years now to deal with it he clearly hasn't. And now that elections are approaching, he's hot-footed it off to Maiduguri. 
I think that uh, is uh, uncharitable, if I might use the word to say he hasn't. Boko Haram has technically been defeated in every sense of, of the word. Well, clearly I not. I think that, and uh, no, what we are dealing with, Boko Haram started as a religious movement with the creed of their own system of law and administration, and they tried to get territory in order to administer a state that they called the Caliphate. That dream has been vanquished. And if you see the character of recent attacks now, you can clearly see that Boko Haram is a generic term used to describe all of these things, but there is, there is massive criminality and looting going on from bandits by bandits who have uh, international connections, are getting weepery, and the common, you, when they raid our villages and communities on the border areas, what they do is they take away food stuff and livestock. If they can get military positions, they take away weapons so that they can use them the next time they come. So the thing about ideology, which you said, is missing, absolutely missing, because nobody is carrying with them any creed, any booklet or pamphlet announcing a mission, whether religious or whatever, to convince people to follow them. You, it's about food economy. You brought up that issue again of Boko Haram being technically defeated. Yes, sir. If they're technically, and I, and I still don't understand what that term means, if they're technically defeated, why the need for an emergency summit today? I mean, okay, I will explain. When we say they are defeated, I live in Abuja, you are in Abuja as we speak now. You know that four, five years ago, you could not have slept with your two eyes closed. Boko Haram had broken into prisons in Abuja to free their men. They had broken into prisons in Mina, Niger, in Lokoja, and Koton Karfi in Kogi State. They are everywhere. They were all over the place. The pushback has been very effective. Now they have been pushed to the very fringes of the Nigeria border with the, these territories close to Lake Chad. And we have a deal with these neighbors. Everyone under the, you know, the, 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 the contract binding us to the multinational joint task force, we are supposed to guard our border. And if it is warranted, we could cross into the, the territory of the neighboring country and pursue you know, criminal elements. So the freedom of movement was allowed. But as it is now, again, without meaning to touch, to, 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 to touch off a diplomatic uh, row with our neighbors, clearly you can see that this uh, spiral we are talking about is not just to Nigeria. No, Niger Republic is also being attacked. Last week there was a seizure of about 50 persons, children, women, and all of that. Cameroon is also... So therefore, what they are doing, and I hope they will succeed in doing when they meet in Germany today, is that they should stitch up these this, this openings so that, so that the, the elements that are flowing in... Because I'm aware, you, I'm, I'm sure you have seen the statement from the Army Top Command, clearly indicating that there are foreign mercenaries who are using drones, you know, reconnaissance drones, to know positions flying in and out. In other words, their position has been strengthened and they're not technically defeated. So, so it, it, is, it is not right of you to sit there and tell the Nigerian people that Boko Haram have been te technically no, defeated. No, in no. fact, because you'd have to then explain the recent upsurge in violence by the militants, because they seem to be acquiring more sophisticated weapons, as you said, getting stronger, when the impression that you're giving us all along is that they're weakening. Well, this is why this is a good opportunity to sit down with you and mm. talk. And I'm trying to say, and I hope that I'm making the point clear to those who are watching us, is that we are faced with a new kind of enemy. For us, Boko Haram, <coughs> that said this is our own version of Islam, which is different from your own, and for which it's no longer an issue here. That nobody is, nobody is, 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 is trying to sell a different 
brand of Islam from the one that uh, people in Borno and Yobe are, are practicing. You are dealing with criminal <coughs> elements who come in in search of food and, 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 and livestock and, and whipori. And well, they, if, they, if are, they, they are if, present. I don't mean to interrupt you, Garba, but, but if they yeah. were coming in mm -hmm. for food and livestock, why mm -hmm. are they attacking military bases? Because they need the, whip, they need the guns. But, but they, they've, they've, they have aimed their attacks at military bases over and over again. And you keep telling us that they're a weaker organization, and yet they have the capacity to go and well, attack military bases, at least 17 attacks in the last few months. I think that Nigerians, I think what is happening is a lot of our countrymen don't want to come to terms with the fact that we have a serious problem. Yeah, because you've been from telling, you've been telling our the Nigerian no. people that they don't have a serious no, no, problem. No, no, you've no. been telling no. us that, that you've degraded Boko Haram, that Boko you've Haram, technically defeated them. If you would allow it, and I hope my viewers would agree with me, that Boko Haram is not the big issue here. We are dealing with Islam, you know, ISIS. Yeah, but, and, but, and but they, are, elements. they have merged with elements of Boko Haram. And so you're looking at a super Boko Haram, a much stronger. And what we want you to do mm. is to concede that this is, the battle is far from won, that, that you have not technically defeated Boko Haram, that these guys are much stronger. Now, and let me ask you this. Does anyone actually have a clear idea of how many Boko Haram militants there are? And I'm talking about all the different factions with, you know, the ISIS faction, the, the other factions. Do you have a sort of ballpark figure on the side? Because, I mean, that's critical in, in you know, in intelligence gathering to know what you're actually fighting. I mean, do you have any idea? the size of Boko Haram at the moment because the evidence seems to suggest <laughs> that they are actually recruiting more and more people. I was talking to an international security analyst today mm. who is South African. Mm. I mean, South Africa was, I mean, the Nigerian government brought mercenaries from South Africa to fight them previously. And I, I was talking to somebody from there who actually said that these guys are recruiting more and more people. And in agreeing what you, with what you said, a lot of those people are foreigners who, have, who are battle hardened in many other parts of the world. And they're helping them propagate this war against the states in the Lake Chad Basin. So, I mean, you have to admit, if you don't identify a problem, you can't solve it. Well, if, if if I am forced to admit it on this show, uh, then there's no point in talking further on the matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, yeah, but the, the point one is trying to make is, is that we are surrounded by countries who are neighboring the Sahel Desert. Much of it that is ungoverned. And a territory <laughs> in which expelled elements from Iraq and Syria, from Libya, that have been trained, that are weaponized, they have weapons, and, and for whatever reason, whether it's adventure or driven by poverty, they have come to find the perfect condition for their settlement in areas that are largely ungoverned in our own neighborhood. This country has done so much, the pushback has been excellent. Boko Haram had reached Lokoja and the Edo State. We have pushed them to the very fringes of Lake Chad, a very thin borderline area between Nigeria, Niger, Chad, and Cameroon. Nobody is disputing the oh, fact. Oh, no. Nobody then to have say, no. to, for anyone to say that we have achieved nothing and they failed, then that no, is no, not a no, fair no, comment. No, no. No, nobody is disputing the fact that you have put up a fight against Boko Haram. Yeah. You might even have succeeded yeah, to a yeah. large extent. Yeah. What we are talking about mm. is, a, is a resurgent Boko Haram, so they, it, an, a, an, an upsurge in, in violence. And we want to understand not only the current situation beyond the propaganda, mm. we want to know the culpability of the government of Nigeria in that upsurge. Because President okay, Buhari you, uh, yesterday, mm. let me just finish this, mm. asked the troops to show more commitment mm. in fighting Boko Haram. Mm. And it sounded to me like morale 
was not very high in the army at the moment. And a lot of the complaints we hear about is that they're not getting their payments in time. They're not getting the right equipment. Some of them are completely battle weary because they've been fighting for the last three years. Well, they're putting so much into this. Well, I'm a, you, you can take them one after the yeah. other. Yeah. Oh, so you will allow me then? I will of course you, can, you, okay. you, you can speak. Okay. So let me say that. As I, as I said, I'm being very careful again not to touch off a diplomatic row. But there is a weakening in the protection of the border in some of the neighboring countries around us. What about Nigeria? And therefore, because they're no, wait, coming wait. across Nigeria. Yeah, border. exactly. So exactly. your borders are so weak the government as well. of Nigeria, we are all victims right. of the situation in which some others have not been able to do their part of. So this is why this emergency meeting is warranted. And for the benefit of Nigerians to know, you know that even the, 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 the bill for the multinational joint task force is largely borne by Nigeria. In effect, if we don't pay, it is unlikely that anybody will be paying for those trips to man Lake Chad. Yeah, but you're clearly not so paying enough. You're yeah. not paying your own troops. I mean, that's one of their big complaints. I am there have been open letters written in newspapers. There have been open letters written to President Buhari. Correspondents in that region bring daily reports well, we, we of, 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 of a lot of troops well, who complain bitterly. I, of I would, neglect. I would, when I sit with you here, I would rather believe the Nigerian government for which I work than to believe uh, peddlers of uh, whether fake or, or n false news on the social media. In any case, a lot of them are there. A lot of politicians are also there trying to right. cash in on all of these things. So we understand what is uh, playing out. I make this statement on my honor that I, to the best of my knowledge, there has not been one administration under this constitution that has funded the military as much as President Buhari has done. But it's not so enough. So we have done, we have done. You may have funded they will never, more, they will but it's not enough. They will never get enough because the Nigerian military will have to go into the budget process. They will go before National Assembly. They have to compete for money with the, with the unemployment, with the education, with the health, and all of that. They cannot have everything. But the duty of the commander-in-chief, and the president of Nigeria is doing that most effectively, yes. is to ensure that they have as much as they need yeah, but, in but order they, to confront the situation. But they can't where have they, everything where they, they need, but where you there, expect, new them, challenges, you where expect new, them to go and die for they, Where there are new challenges, then you have to come together and see rise up to the challenge. And that's why he had to be in Meduguri to get first-hand information. Listen to the frontline commanders and know if there are problems, what are they? Right. And, and what, from there... He decided as the chairman of the heads of state of Lake Chad to say, look, look, we have a regional problem. All of us need to come together, including leaders of Central African right. Republic. So we are rising to the occasion. New challenges are coming. And when new challenges come, the important thing is, are you meeting up on them? And yes, we are. Right. And what sort of reception did the president get when he arrived in my degree yesterday? Well, you were there with him. The president was very well received by the people, and I'm sure that television pictures have conveyed this to Nigerians in their homes to see the happiness in the people of Meduguri shouting, Say Baba, convinced that this is a president who is committed to their well being and ensuring that they live peacefully, as do all other Nigerians. He went to the palace of the Shehu, and Shehu read out his speech in which he said thank you president for bringing peace to Borno and there are problems and here they are as a listening president he took his note and would see what would follow of course he was in my degree for less than a day I understand he left yesterday that is correct So he didn't actually spend the night or yes. anything there mm -hmm. uh, he left town um, the same day that he arrived, mm -hmm. that does not inspire much confidence, does it? <laughs> Especially when we hear of yet another attack last night in which three soldiers were killed. Yeah, but the president uh, uh, didn't wear army uniform. He's a m retired general, you know that. He didn't wear uniform. Well, he's a commander in chief. Exactly, but he didn't wear a uniform to take up gun to go fight. No, he went to listen to the commanders and visit in hospital those who were injured and commiserate with families of those. Who lost that you know who said uh, you know lost their dear ones and uh, that he effectively did i can understand 
the fact that, I mean, I know you personally as, as quite a straightforward and an honest person, mm -hmm. but I, I, I have difficulty in accepting your assessment of, of the situation. Let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. Four years mm -hmm. after you mm -hmm. took over mm -hmm. the government of this country, you being President Buhari and, and your government, mm -hmm. promising to end the Boko Haram insurgency, um, and almost three years after you told the world that Boko Haram had been defeated, mm -hmm. the, now you're qualifying it. De technically defeated, degraded, all these terms mm -hmm. to try and obfuscate mm -hmm. the, the fact that you haven't actually defeated mm -hmm. them. The northeast of Nigeria, after all of that, still submerged beneath the rubble of the insurgency. Attacks remain rife. The Nigerian army still vying for control of the Northeast with Boko Haram and other proxy breakaway militias from Boko Haram. Is that a fair assessment? No, absolutely no. I would have said that uh, this uh, would be coming straight from the north over those uh, disappointed mercenaries who were thrown out of this country <laughs> because we felt we had uh, sufficient capacity at home to fight our own war, and we're doing it. In any case, those who live in this country, who understand what is going on, know and feel and appreciate what we have achieved in these four years. Boko Haram had bombed mosques and the churches every Sunday. That's not happening in this country. They have been pushed back effectively to the fringe areas of the Nigerian border, a very thin line of border territory dividing us with our neighbors nigeria and that itself is being fought and will end it nigeria is not comprised of abuja there are people living in the i, I come, the, I come the, from kano the, in my city in kano 300 persons were bombed in the central mosque on one day there are on a juma at friday mosque they set up series of bombings and the gun attacks, more than 300 died. And do, and do you day. think... So therefore, and, and, and when the Kano person, as I do, sleep with our two eyes closed, and you, someone tell me, tell, come to, comes to tell me that nothing has changed? Well, absolutely zero. Do no. you think what you're saying will make a difference to someone who is in the war zone in Borno State? Do you think that if you go to the, uh, but, if, but if I, you go I, to the IDP camps and you see the lives of people there, and we have sent cameras there innumerable times. If you go to that place, I personally have traveled to Maiduguri, I have gone to Yobe State, I've traveled through a lot of those places. I know the condition of people there. I mean, can you honestly, can, can you see why it might be difficult for those people there to take the line that you're feeding the Nigerian people that Boko Haram has been technically but defeated. But pic pictures don't lie. We just spoke a short while ago about the enormity of the crowds that turned out on the streets chanting and waving at the president, shouting Sai Baba. If those people, all of those we saw in Meduguri on the streets, lining up all of the streets, running into kilometers of mileage if all of those were non-nigerians well they probably were imported from a different country and then <laughs> well, they will, they will, they will have, me. they will have <laughs> gone back by tomorrow but otherwise but, but, but otherwise the thing is that if those were angry crowds it would have shown no no what i'm saying is that we're talking about people who have been under siege for a long time. It is much better and, and as the president said it would have been worse. Th these are people who are poverty ravaged. Yeah, that's true. They, well, that's, okay. a, that's the bottom line. Th and these I, are people who are looking for hope. Uh, and the arrival of the president clearly stimulated some excitement. It's not something that happens every day well, in their That's the definition of it. I mean, you know, and, and they, they're saying to themselves, well, maybe our lives oh, is that are, so? are going to change. Is that I mean, so? Well, that's, that's, that's the impression that we said. I mean, the bottom line is that, you know, you, you can't, look, they look, can't, I, I think, I think they that can't be celebrating the president when the war is clearly not over. No, but this is a city in which today, as we speak, national football league is being played in Meduguri. Who have, would have ever thought this would happen four years ago? That's Maiduguri. Borno is a big state. Yeah, exactly. And you, I'm you, saying you to you that You may have put the defenses around... 
may allow me but but or, the, the, the or, rest of the state is under siege in 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 2015 when we took power the only access to meduguri was through potiskum meduguri road today all of the roads leading in and out of meduguri have been opened up to traffic things have changed and people who live in those places they know what has changed in their own lives and that's why they're happy with the president so your response mm. to the question why is there an upsurge of fighting in the northeast mm. in the last month mm. more than a hundred nigerian soldiers have been killed i don't know about that that is those are the figures we have and i'm pretty sure those figures are accurate what I'm asking you is, mm. how can you sit there and tell the Nigerian people that Boko Haram are technically defeated? We're not talking about soft targets. We're not talking about people going to attack civilians in a marketplace. We're talking about going to military bases. At least 17 attacks on military bases since July. Mm. That is an extraordinary number, and that well, is a what, worrying upsurge what I, in the what fighting. I, what I will say is that those people who live in those places, they are also witness to the fact that actually part of the military engagement now in their places is reconstruction of damaged infrastructure, schools, roads, and bridges, in order that those in IDP camps will be taken back home and they resume their own lives. Agriculture has resumed in many of those places. Life has returned to many of these communities and the IDP camps are being emptied as we speak. That is to tell you that life is coming back. Uh, 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 people who had been taken against their will, more than 50,000 had been taken back and reunited with their own families. And, and in fact, an operation safe corridor to rehabilitate and reorientate Boko Haram you know, terrorists who have made a change of mind is ongoing so that they come back and resume life as members of society. This are nothing, these things are not, indicate nothing but signs of normalcy coming back to the Northeast and to Borno State. Is there any chance, because let's be realistic here, yeah. you're fighting an insurgency mm. You're not going to wave a magic wand. You've, you've certainly given that impression, and that impression has been shown to be the wrong impression. You're not going to wave <laughs> a magic wand, and it's all over. Are there any moves being made to look for a political solution to this problem, rather than a military one? Because clearly, there won't be a military one in the foreseeable future. Well, uh, the, I think the nature of uh, global terrorism uh, history has uh, taught us is that uh, it, it will take uh, uh, both ways, military and the non-military. Yeah, but to, what are you doing absorb. in the non-military? We know what you're doing militarily. What, is, what are you doing in the non-military side? The, the, there is an ongoing engagement, an engagement that has yielded dividends that had led to the surrender of a number of commanders and fighters and that had yielded the release of of persons held against their will, including lecturers from the University of Meduguri, uh, Chibo girls. So, uh, and, and, well, and, the Chibo girls, there are quite a few of them are still under Yeah, and, and we are not giving up. Kidnapped. We have, have not given up, including Leah Sharibu. We are engaging. And there are countries that are helping in the belief that they are listened to by the terrorists. And it has yielded good results, dividends to us in the past, and we are hoping that it will continue to yield. Look, what the president's mind is, I, I, for him, th this fight should end today. It's costing the taxpayer a lot of money. It's costing Nigerian lives, and nobody is gaining from it. But the terrorists, if they are Nigerian, they can still be reintegrated and become useful members of society, and they continue their own lives. What do you see as the solution to that problem? You, you, you sit is, with is, the president is, is, virtually me, every day. I, I hope you will agree with me. Uh, well, I hope the people who are looking at us will agree. The problem is largely economic. Because uh, people like to dismiss this fact of climate impact of climate change on the drying up of Lake Chad to 10% only of its original size. With that, then the demise of agriculture, of fishing, and a lot of economic activity in that place. 
it, that has provided a, nurtured, a, a perfect ground to nurture criminality and, 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 and extremism of the sort that we have seen. We hope that the president will succeed in getting the rich world to pump in money so that we bring in waters from Central Africa and recharge Lake Chad. You know, so that the waters will be back again. There will be agriculture, there will be fishing, there will be economic activity, and there will be education. The governor of Borno, before we left, said to Mr. President, in a, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to call you back to commission 10 model schools that will serve for our people. That's the kind of thing we need to see. With the education, with the economic activity, nobody will convince you and I, you know, all of your degrees and all of that to come and take up arms against this country on account of some 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 confusing you know ideology this thing has gone beyond ideology it's purely economic and will overcome okay garba shehu uh, president buhari's spokesman i want to thank you very much indeed for coming in thank you <laughs> thank you sir always good to see you and i appreciate your coming in i know you're a busy man you're watching nigeria the road to 2019